All right, so right now I'm kind of just uh, meandering through the studio trying to find the Sony CLV55 monitor. I don't know where the hell I put it. I've got the lily put right here. Oh, wait a minute, that's not the lily put. Uh, I've got the yeah small HD monitor there. Um, I know where the batteries are. We've got a bunch of these Sony batteries already charged up and ready to go, but what the hell did I do with the actual monitor? Now, here looking close up, it looks like, yeah, this is that Valtrox monitor. I'm about to start working on the review for that. Close that back up. That's a Sony mount. This is the kind of cheap little uh, clone of the Sony adapter. I actually kind of like the Sony adapter. This one's not too bad actually. And the monitor is way cheaper. Um, I'll continue to search. Basically this is just some uh, behind the scenes. So you guys know what I go through when I'm trying to put together a full length review. This is gonna be on the second channel since keep slacking off and not actually uh, using it for anything in particular. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, maybe I've got it in this, in this case here. Uh, no, it looks like that's a Zoom H1. Put it in there. Uh, man, I've been filming so much, my camera bag is a mess. I don't know where anything's at right now. So I'm gonna keep looking. I'll get back to you. All right, so I finally found the Sony uh, monitor here. Got that uh, right here. Let's open it up real quick. Looks a little close. You notice that these look pretty similar. In fact, they're almost identical from that side. You set them sideways. They're kind of a little bit different size. It looks like the Sony is slightly skinnier than the Valtrox DC50, but they both use the same batteries. The switch is sideways here. This one's kind of off to the side. And actually, after a lot of use, this switch has kind of stopped working on mine, and I have to use a quarter or something to push that little nub right there in. It's kind of a pain in the butt. But it works pretty good. And I finally found the freaking monitor. Turns out it was just underneath of the bag instead of in the bag. So looking closer here, kind of get an idea of what I want to do for the review. But you can see that this is the actual Sony adjustable piece. And this is the Valtrox unit's adjustable piece. Both of them kind of have, actually the Sony's is a little tougher to move than the Valtrox, which is a little bit easier. And you can see that you can see a little bit of hardware sticking out down there at the bottom. Whereas the Sony is a little bit cleaner looking with all plastic right up to the edge of the moving platform. Both of them have the nub there. So if you're trying to use this on other monitors, it might not be very handy. The Sony on the bottom here has the nub as well as the Valtrox, but the Sony's is made out of metal and the Valtrox is made out of plastic here. Also, oddly, the Valtrox has this little USB port. Not 100% sure what the heck they're doing with that there, but it's there, whatever. And then DCN, looks like you got a nice plug. The buttons are a little bit different on here, but you still have a push scroll wheel like you do with the Sony. It just doesn't feel quite as good. And this one, does have a push scroll, but it makes a nice click when you push on it. it makes it feel a little bit, uh, a little bit better here. I don't actually see what's in here. This is, hmm. Open this up. What is that? Oh, that is the power jack for the Sony. If you want to have DC in, it's not a standard jack. Whereas Valtrox uses this regular barrel pin thing. That's probably a little more common than what you see on some of these other ones. 
So I'm gonna continue to figure out how to set up this review and I'll get back to you as I continue with this setup. And of course, my trusty dog, Hero, down here to guard my feet. No, no, no. If you haven't seen them, these cables, Hyper Thin by Sanho, S-A-N-H-O, are pretty freaking sweet. I've got a couple of them extra still packaged that I haven't taken out yet. But uh, this one's the one that I use with the uh, Sony monitor. You can see very flexible, very, very handy. And here's the one that comes with the Sony monitor. It's kind of stiff, hard to adjust, not great for your rig. Um, I do suggest getting one of these if you don't already have one. It's just a little right angle plug. Makes it a little easier to feed your cable back into your monitor. If you plug that in, here's the Sony right here. Plug that in, let's see, right here. Then it's facing the back, so then it makes it easier for you to bring your HDMI cables off to the side and into the camera, depending on where you have your monitor mounted. Um, this is more behind the scenes. I'm basically just looking through all this stuff right now, trying to figure out what I wanna talk about in the review and kinda comparing each one of these while I sit on the floor in the studio which, by the way, is still a mess. I'm gonna work on that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, more behind the scenes coming to you soon. I'm gonna keep messing around with this stuff. And of course, the dogs are telling me that I think it's time to go to the park. Huh, Hero? You wanna go to the park? P-A-R-K. Oh, you like your head rub. Yeah, so take a break from filming for a little bit and take these guys to uh, the park. All right, so I got both these monitors right here and I'm kind of messing around with them. Now you can see I'm filming these with the Tamron 24 to 70, pretty nice lens. Thanks Dave, Doug, Dale for putting me onto that. Um, I was mentioning that my Sony has some issues after a lot of use, this little tab right here, see that? I don't know if you can see that or not. Basically, it doesn't want to slide in when you push this anymore. So you have to kind of give it a little bit of assistance like that, push it in with something, and then the little switch will hold it, but it doesn't release by itself. You can see on the Valtrex, this one just lifts up. I think that's actually kind of a smarter design. Both of them use the same batteries though. I'm gonna continue on with the review right now. I'm just comparing the two and doing close-up shots. I'm gonna take them outside, I think, and maybe take a look at how they do in bright light and see how easy it is to see the screen. I think the sun monitors, the little sunshades are pretty much identical on these guys. And then we'll test out the peaking and take a look at the color on these and see how good they look. So I finished filming pretty much everything for the review and now I'm at my trusty editing bay, which is basically just a desk with a large monitor crammed in the corner of my bedroom. Nothing extremely fancy. I'm gonna work on the review today. Hopefully that should be up sometime next week. This is kind of haphazard, just behind the scenes stuff. Uh, give me some comments or whatever. Let me know what you guys think of this. Is it useful? Do you find it informative? If not, I cannot do it. It's not that big a deal either way. But that's pretty much it for behind the scenes with Valtrex DC50 review. I'll see you guys next time.